what if I told you that the other day I was grabbing a drink with a Filipino Buddhist who happened to be a lesbian? Chances are, if you're a young adult, you don't think anything of it. It seems totally normal. But if you were alive 50 years ago, even just 30 years ago, or maybe even 10 years ago, this drink would be scandalous. This hypothetical scenario draws out one of the interesting differences in today's world and specifically in the worldview of today's young adults. We're now living in a world created by successful social rights movements. Our reality is that young adults today are more likely to have a female boss, know someone in a biracial relationship, and have a close friend who's gay or bisexual. What would have been scandalous in generations past is common to today's young adult. The buzzword that's often associated with this is tolerance, and that's what I'd like to talk about in the next few minutes. My belief is that today's young adults are settling for a shallow tolerance that's actually hindering authentic relationships with people of alternative worldviews. The attitude and practice of tolerance has made significant gains in terms of equality, but there's still a long way to go before we see justice. Before we dive into the scriptures, I wanna highlight some of the wins and challenges in regards to specific tensions in our culture. One of them is the fruit of the civil rights movement that has created a world where an African American was actually nominated president twice. Biracial marriage is not only legal today, but it's encouraged. And minority celebrities are mainstays in the worlds of sports and music and movies and television. But young adults today need to know that we haven't arrived at equality. Things like incarceration rates, public education statistics, economic disparities, and most recently, police profiling and brutality show that we have a long way to go before tolerance results in justice. The same can be said of gender equality. Egalitarian roles for women in the home and workplace are beginning to become the norm as more and more women enter into jobs traditionally held by men, and more and more men take on increased roles as parents and homemakers. The Women's World Cup ratings from this past year show a strong trend toward empowering and encouraging women to pursue their dreams without hindrance. But when you see the gap in compensations for equal work, the horror that is American maternity leaves, the crushing stress and pressure of balancing work and home, not to mention the billions of women around the world who are still thought of as second-class citizens, it's obvious that tolerance has a long way to go before producing justice. The level of tolerance for alternative religious views and sexual orientation is still debatable in our generation. On one hand, young adults today are far more likely to know someone who's openly atheistic or a practicing Buddhist. But on the other hand, there are still lots of young adults who stereotype a connection between practicing Muslims and radical terrorist organizations. In terms of sexual orientation, there are obvious political and social reforms on behalf of the LGBTQ community, but there are still tragic stories of bullying and suicide that show how far we still have to go. All of these areas, race, gender, religion, sexuality, they go to prove my point that tolerance is a step in the right direction, but it's a poor destination. We have to aim higher than mere tolerance. So in the final half of this video, I wanna look at a story from John chapter four where Jesus himself engages in a scandalous drink. It's a drink that reveals how we can move beyond tolerance when it comes to people of alternative racial, gender, religious, or sexual beliefs and behaviors. The story in John four starts with the Pharisees getting upset over the new popularity of Jesus and his message of hope. They begin to run him out of town and Jesus decides to travel through Samaria. Because he's tired from the trip, he sits down beside a well and he strikes up a conversation with a woman about the water in the well, her life, and his mission. To the average 21st century listener, this story is no more scandalous than the conversation we imagined at the beginning of the video. But in the first century, this would have been front page news. John 4, 9 is a clue that this might not be a normal or even prohibited conversation. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? And John throws in, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. In this sentence, we see all of our topics for today come to a head. She lives in Samaria, which is a different ethnicity than the Galilean Jews, and she's a she, an obvious fact, but especially important if you know that men, let alone teachers, would have never initiated a conversation with a woman. The race 
and gender distinctions alone would have made this interaction an anomaly. But as the story develops, the scandal increases. Jesus uncovers in verses 16 to 18 that this woman has had five husbands, which is a nice way of saying that she's been passed around, and that she's currently cohabitating with a man who isn't her husband. On top of that, they get into a continuous discussion throughout verses 12, 20, and 25 about all the things that Jews and Samaritans don't agree on in terms of religion. She's a promiscuous, living in sin, Samaritan woman. And Jesus decides that she's worth his time. In this story, Jesus showed a willingness to embrace a people group that his own people had obviously written off. In this story, Jesus showed a regard for the opposite gender that few men, if any, in his day and age would have embraced. And in this story, Jesus initiated a conversation with a woman whose sexual activity would have put her on the tabloids of her town. In this story, Jesus respectfully engages a conversation about her beliefs and practices that opens a door for him to invite her into eternal relationship with him. Race, gender, sexual activity, and religion all in one interaction. How did Jesus manage to overcome all of those differences? It shows us a few things that we Christians should be mindful of, and especially those of us who are young adults in today's world of tolerance. Acceptance for the sake of acceptance is shallow. If we're honest, it's too easy to just accept everyone regardless of what they believe or how they behave. What most of us are saying when we say we're accepting of other people is that I couldn't care less what you think or do. To be tolerant is too shallow of a goal for the Christ-following young adult. Just like Jesus, we have to move beyond tolerance and practice empathy. Over and over throughout the Gospels, there's a word that describes Jesus' heart toward those who believed and behaved differently from him. The word is compassion. Literally, the word, if split into its parts, it's C-O-M, passion. It means with suffering. Jesus knew how to enter people's hearts and see the world through their eyes. He could feel their pain and see their struggle. A compassionate Christ follower seeks to empathize with those who believe or behave differently, not just tolerate them. The amazing thing is that when we aim for empathy, we get tolerance. But if we settle for tolerance, we come up way short of empathy. Acceptance for the sake of acceptance, while culturally cool right now, is too easy and it stops way too short of justice. Acceptance as the fruit of empathy has the power to change broken systems and heal wounded hearts. The woman at the well in John 4 didn't need Jesus to pat her on the back and say, I tolerate you. He initiated a conversation He got to know her story, and he invited her into eternal relationship with him, despite their differences. Martin Luther King knew the power of empathy. Ellen DeGeneres knows the power of empathy. They know that if we could only feel what they feel and see the world through their eyes and experience the pain of their realities, we would treat them differently. Justice is the fruit of empathy, not tolerance. Today's young adult culture is settling for tolerance, but my prayer is that the young adults of the church will follow the example of Jesus and empathize with those of different ethnic, gender, religious, and sexual orientations. Maybe, just like the story in John chapter 4, practicing empathy will give us the opportunity to introduce people to Jesus. And that's where I feel obligated to end this video, because I know that some Christians will think that I'm endorsing a relativistic worldview that embraces pluralism and tells people to just live in the sin that they choose. I have to be very clear about this. Eternal relationship with Jesus is my hope for every single human on this planet. It's my belief that tolerance won't give us as strong of an opportunity to introduce people to Jesus as empathy. If we can learn to be truly compassionate and empathetic, regardless of our differences, we'll have a greater platform and opportunity to share the love, hope, joy, and peace that Jesus offers to all humanity. Empathy will open the door for us to share our Lord and Savior's message at the right time and in the right way. Tolerance is building a world of fake smiles and shallow relationships where nobody tells anybody who they really are. The church, because of our Lord and the young adult population of today, because of the era that we live in, are poised to make significant advances for the good of humanity. 
and if it's done properly, the glory for those advances will be ascribed to the one who sat down at that well all those years ago and showed us how to empathize with one scandalous drink. Uh -oh.